Hi, I'm John Dearham with the Coquille Valley Sword Group, and today we're going to uh, introduce the uh, basic way we go about training how to do throws with the sword. Now, the throws with the sword are entirely a Flinkarovkov element. Uh, we don't use them in fencing at all, obviously. You're not going to throw your sword in the middle of the sword fight while some guy can just drive you, right? Um, however, just like the rest of Flinkarovkov, just because we don't use the identical piece of work in fencing doesn't mean that it doesn't have value for fencing. Um, though uh, the value might be uh, a lot more psychological than physiological as compared to some of the other work that we do. So, throwing the sword, tossing the sword and catching it uh, is very simple and we, we progress in learning the work the same way that we do uh, with cuts, which is to say, we start with a large gross motion uh, from the shoulder, then we move to the elbow, then we move to the hand, until finally we've studied each kind of individual segment of that uh, kinetic wave that we're trying to generate, uh, and then we sort of relax it all, and we let it be sort of a natural motion that we can adapt to specifically how we want to do it, all right? So, to begin with, we're doing a, a very simple warm-up, which is to take the sword, to toss it to the other hand, right? Up and toss, up and toss, up and toss. What you're looking to do here is study how your body reacts to the sword when it's up. In other words, uh, most people let their posture uh, break apart as they train on it with their face, right? What you want to do is just be nice, relaxed, soft in your posture as you uh, make this transition. We only do this for a little bit of time until uh, our hearts become a little bit uh, less ecstatic about the whole thing. Right? It becomes calm and comfortable. Uh, once we get a handle on this, we move to uh, a flipping motion, right? And what we're doing here is we're flipping the sword 180 degrees and catching the end, right? So again, I start with my shoulder, bottom, bottom, right? Now, as you do this, the quality of motion that you're looking for in the sword is a, a lofting motion, right? It's very uh, light, soft, right? So just like before, you want to avoid breaking your posture radically. Um, you steady your breath. And you just do this until you become very comfortable. Um, because while you consciously are not uh, studying much more than how you feel and, and how you've positioned yourself, subconsciously your mind is uh, building up kind of a database of information, uh, experiential data that says, oh, if I move my body in this kind of fashion, that's the result, right? And the more you do it, the more information you have, the more proficient you become with that body motion. Now, this is the same for all body motions, um, but it is particularly noticeable in uh, these sort of throws and catches. Now, as you go, you want to pay attention to how your hand interacts with the force. In other words, I don't want to throw it and have my hand come up to it and strike it as it's coming down, right? Even on these uh, synthetics, it's uh, going to really start to hurt after a while. What you want to do instead is, you see, match the motion as the sword comes down and meet it gently, right? And meet it gently, and meet it gently, and meet it gently. It shouldn't hurt your hand. Um, now this should go without saying, don't do this with sharp swords, right? Once you get through this uh, sort of initial training period and you start doing throws, 
where you're just working uh, handle to handle to catch 360 degrees, then you can work to uh, either unsharpen swords or sharp swords, depending on your uh, bravery or stupidity. I'm not sure which. Um, but in the beginning, right, in this kind of work, it's best not to uh, use the metal right off the bat because you're still building that database and it's easy for you to hark it up and uh, the swords are sharp, right? They can really, they can really mess you up. So, uh, of course, you're doing this with both hands, right? Now, once you get comfortable uh, with this sort of shoulder motion, you begin to work with the elbow. And let the elbow throw it. Right? Elbow comes up, whoop. Sword comes up, whoop. Everything comes down together, nice and easy. Once you're comfortable there, you move to the wrist. Right? Super simple, super easy. After then, you relax the whole arm. Oh, <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> you relax the whole arm and you let this whole thing uh, really soften so that it just becomes uh, really easy, right? So I'm using a little bit of shoulder, a little bit of elbow, a little bit of wrist, right? Now I'm still uh, bringing the sword high. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm lofting it and letting it come down because I want to get used to this idea of watching it in space, right? A lot of people make two very big mistakes with these sword throws. One, they try and rush it right off the bat, right? Like they're trying to like catch a mouse or something, right? This is uh, not good because for one, uh, when you think about an object as being fast, your mind begins to perceive it as fast. In other words, uh, the more stress and sort of strain going at it you go, the faster it all seems to move. What we want to do is take this opportunity to really study this uh, thing that we think of as happening very quickly so that we can see that it's, it's not really happening very quickly at all. It's uh, very slow. We have more than enough time to look at it, to see what's going on, to make decisions based on that uh, observation, right? We're training our mind to respond to a stressful situation by calming down and taking in information, right? Uh, this is just one of the myriad of these little sort of psychological baby steps that we use to develop the kind of uh, uh, instinctual response to conflict and uh, adrenaline, right? So that when things go sideways, right, we just, oh, right, it calms down, we slow it down in our mind, and we're able to uh, work to it so that we're not uh, overwhelmed emotionally by the violence, right? So we don't have to deal with that. We can just deal with the violence, right? So take it slow, right? Study the slow. Study uh, how your heart feels about it. Uh, feelings are important here because your feelings shape how your body behaves. It shapes how your mind perceives and uh, assesses things in your environment. So it's really important to cultivate uh, good psychological habits when you're, when you're working to do uh, violent work like this. Anyway, from here, the obvious uh, motion is to take it 360 degrees so that the handle comes all the way around and comes back to my hand. Right? And in the same way, uh, I'll begin the work with my shoulder, I'll go to my elbow, and I'll go to my wrist. Right? So in the beginning, right? long and it becomes elbow make sure you don't hold your breath right anytime we uh, apply a lot of intense visual or mental focus to something we tend to uh, forestall our own breathing take your time 
and really keep it in tension. Right? After the elbow. We start doing it with just the, the hand. Then, of course, everything relaxes. And we catch soft with a little bit of whip through the whole arm. Uh, same thing with the other hand. <laughs> right? And you can trade them back and forth. One, two, three, four. Right? Um, when you get this feeling, it's, um, it's very easy, right? But it does take practice, you know, maybe uh, an hour and a half, two hours, and you should be able to do this work. It's not too rough. Um, another three or so hours, and your body will be able to do it with a lot more uh, comfort and a lot less sort of tension in your heart. But practice it. Study the work. Study uh, this idea of being calm under stress and of taking that stressful situation and slowing it down. Right? Of course, uh, once you've uh, gotten really comfortable, you can begin to play with things like where you're throwing the sword. So instead of bringing the sword up, maybe I just bring it in this space right here. Very short throw, right? You can play with it. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for this first throw. Um, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.